So we learned um, last night and over the course of this morning that the MEAC, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, in regards to FCS football, they're not playing this spring. Uh, most of the teams have opted out. Six of the nine teams have opted out. And that leaves Howard, South Carolina State, and I believe Morgan State. You know, that's left. Norfolk State is out. North Carolina A&T out. They are gone to the Big South with this. Bethune-Cookman and Florida A&M have already opted out. No, wait, Delaware State. Delaware State, yeah. Delaware State, Howard, South Carolina State. Yeah, yeah, those are the three teams. Not Morgan State. Morgan State already opted out. Norfolk State opted out. North Carolina Central opted out. And this really just segues into what I want to really talk about today. Is that the MEAC is imploding at a fast, fast pace. You thought the Southland was bad. MEAC might be worse in that regard. Now, I'm not sure how the, um, let, let's just talk TV contracts first. I'm not sure how the TV contracts work in regards to what ESPN is putting out there, but they're definitely putting a lot more SWAT games on places like ESPNU, which is really the primary place for SWAC football games to go anyway, did whatever the MEAC has done. Uh, I've seen, I've looked at schedules, I've looked at stuff like that over the past, you know, five to ten years, and I've seen way more SWAC games go on ESPNU or, e or you know, you know, ESPN3 than whatever the MEAC has done in the past five years. It's a damn shame. The fact that, the fact that North Carolina AT said, hey, travel costs are too much. Too much. We can't do it anymore. We're going to move on to the Big South. The fact that Bethune Cookman and Florida A&M said, Hey, we're we're just gonna go, we just don't like you know the travel costs and stuff like that. We don't like going up to, you know, Maryland and, and New York and, and um, Virginia, stuff like that. We'd rather go to the South, you know, to Mississippi, Texas, Louisiana, instead of you know going up, you know, these cross Atlantic flights and stuff like that. There's the there's that fact of the matter as well, and the fact that there's only eight, you know, teams left in this conference. You know, Coppin State and Maryland Eastern Shore do not sponsor football. They only sponsor you know basketball and all the other sports. It means that you know things are looking kind of dicey. You know, they only have eight. That's the minimum you need to get into the NCAA tournament. That this is regards to the only two things that matter. In the sports world, as far as college athletics go, because none, none of the other stuff matters. But you need eight teams to go to the NCAA tournament. March Madness in college basketball. You need six teams in FCS football to get that automatic bid. But the MEAC doesn't do the automatic bid, remember? They don't do that anymore. Remember? You know, because way too many times we've seen the MEAC get beat up, destroyed, absolutely just... Ugh, rough playoff performances from from way back in the day to what 2014 when the Miak finally said, "Hey, that's enough of that. We're doing the celebration bowl with the SWAC now. We finally got it together." Now with the SWAC at 12 teams and the Miak at six, you know things are looking kind of dicey, but things are looking up. I think things are looking up. Delaware State release their 2021 schedule and this is how this is going this is how things need to be going going forward for the MEAC and and also North Carolina Central released their schedule you know a couple weeks back I believe or one or two weeks ago they released their schedule and North Carolina Central schedule loaded up with HBCUs you know they got you know they got their one you know FCS game against another FCS opponent that isn't a black school you know, and they got their one FPS game, and then they got a bunch of it, and then they got a bunch of black schools on there. Delaware State doing the same thing. You know, they got their primary rival 
well, you know, Delaware State, not De I mean, not Delaware, the University of Delaware, you know, on there for most of their games. So, you know, Delaware State has at least one non-conference game that they can do pretty much every year. And then the other ones, you know, are very much easier to find, you know, like they'll get opponents like Georgetown in there or Merrimack in there or East Tennessee State up in there. That and, and strategically getting home games and stuff like that. This is what the MEAC needs to do in football with the six teams they have left going forward. Strategically schedule, you know, hey, you can even get some of those Ivy League teams up in there. Make those Ivy League schools come on down. You know, you know, the, you know, you know damn well that, you know, that a, a matchup like Harvard versus North Carolina Central would be interesting. I mean, remember the whole Howard versus Harvard thing? But a couple years back when Howard finally took on um, Harvard? Pretty interesting stuff right there. So, strategically starting to schedule, as far as basketball goes, I don't think that, that anything's going to change there. I think, you know, either some low-end, you know, Division 2, II, Division 3, NAIA, you know, teams like those for, you know, like one or two home games, you know, to just offset, you know, some things at least to get, at least to get the fans up in there for home games. You know, before the MEAC schedules, you know, for the 14 games in conference that the MEAC is probably going to do now because there's only eight teams left. And then the other 15 to 17 games, you know, it might have to be a bunch of bye games. It might have to be a bunch of bye games. You might, you know, MEAC schools might have to get beat up a little bit and go like 1 and 16, 0 and 17, 0 and 15, uh, 2 and 13 in non-conference play, you know, to get some more money up in there to maybe attract some, you know, options. But then again, the options are very slim for the MEAC right now. And I know somebody else said something about Chicago State. You know, they're a predominantly black school. They're not an HBCU. They're not historically a, you know, but they are predominantly black. That is a predominantly black school. So what about Chicago State? What what can they do? Well, I think Chicago State is going to drop, you know, down completely out of athletics. We, I've been saying that. A lot of people have been saying that for years. But if the MEAC can coerce them, you know, if there's a way that the MEAC can coerce them into coming, then that would be, you know, interesting. It wouldn't solve the travel problem at all. But a tight geographical footprint for the MEAC right now is perfect. There's no way you're going to get Bowie State, no Virginia Union. You know, the CIAA schools are not coming. They've said, I've seen some places say that the CIA schools are content where they are. They like where they are. So things like that are not going to happen. So yeah, what I think, the, again, what I think the MEAC needs to do going forward is schedule strategically you know, in both college basketball and college football, they need to schedule strategically, smart, and, you know, assure themselves of getting more W's and making sure that perception does not go down, you know, now that you only have six teams. In college basketball, same thing. You have to strategically schedule, you know, get get some more money on these TV deals and stuff like that. Get some more games you know, on what e on ESPN, you get some you get some more money. The SWAC has been doing it very, very well. There's a reason I haven't talked about the SWAC, you know, in any videos and stuff like that. But the MEAC, you know, needs to get their money together. Needs to get some leadership. Needs to step it up quickly. And if they can't do that, then you know, I don't know what to tell you. So yeah, that'll do it. It's my rant. That's my little thing. That's my opinion here. Y'all take care.